In this video, I wanted to talk about solution adaptive meshing in SOLIDWORKS flow simulation, which is a more advanced technique that can automatically refine the mesh for you. If you haven't already checked out our meshing guide for SOLIDWORKS flow simulation, I'd recommend doing that now, as this video assumes you already have a good idea of the meshing. We frequently use, and I often think of the solution adaptive refinement as a tool for external flow problems like lift and drag problems or wind loadings, but they can also be used for internal flows, pipe flows, and even thermal problems. So what we have here is a wind loading on a billboard, and we basically set this up in the most simple way possible where we're just using the complete default mesh settings. So this is going to serve as sort of the baseline for our um, analysis. So if we go ahead and run this, we'll see eventually our goals converge and we can take a look at the velocity and also the mesh that was created. So as a reminder, the uh, global mesh is kind of the initial starting point for SOLIDWORKS flow simulation, where it will subdivide the computational domain into these cells. But then when you actually click run or click to create the mesh, it will subdivide those cells and we can use this mesh plot to see how they were refined. So near our billboard, even without touching any mesh settings, the cells were subdivided now, this default level of mesh will probably get us in the right ballpark, but it's unlikely to be highly accurate. If we show the value for our drag force here, we're getting about 66, 67 kilonewtons for this 90 mile an hour wind loading. So next, you could manually refine the mesh yourself using the techniques from that meshing guide. And this would be placing local mesh refinements. Like in this case, I've placed a local mesh refinement, selecting the parts of the billboard and defining the equidistant refinement that'll create the shells of mesh around it. And then I've also placed a local mesh using the region option, which allows me to kind of freehand size a volume to refine uh, to capture the wake of this billboard. So let's take a look at these results. The mesh plot is uh, very predictable. We can see everywhere within that large volume region I refined. And then those two equidistant shells around the billboard. And this will give us some better results. And you could iterate this process of refining the mesh and checking the drag values that were calculated until you reach what we would call a mesh independent solution. And then we've effectively ruled out the mesh as a potential source of error. Again, the two big sources of error we might get are not having enough mesh refinement and also not solving the solution for long enough that our goals will actually converge. Now let's look at the solution adaptive approach. Now for this one, it requires a little bit of an understanding of the number of iterations or travels or physical time if you're doing a transient study that the problem will take. So I would recommend still running your course initial analysis first. And then the way we enable solution adaptive mesh is actually completely through the calculation control options. So you'll go into here by right clicking the input data folder, for instance, and under the refinement tab, we'll set a limit or for a number of subdivisions that we want to perform across the whole domain. So that's right here. So I could go from anywhere from, uh, by default, this will be disabled. I go anywhere from you know, let's say four subdivisions all the way up to seven subdivisions from the initial uh, mesh size. And flow simulation is going to choose where these are put for me automatically. 
The next important thing is I need to define a number of maximum cells. So I've set this rather low here just so it will run quickly with 250,000 cells. As a reference, when you're setting the maximum number of cells, every 1 million cells will require about 4 gigabytes of system RAM. And then we set some kind of refinement strategy. And this can be um, based on a variety of factors. It can be periodic, tabular, based on goal convergence, or you can set manual where you actually manually click refine when you want to. Most often I tend to use tabular, and this will allow me to set uh, some number of travels or iterations or physical time if it's a transient study. And I set a table of refinements. So right here I've just created uh, a couple of rows just to say, okay, after two travels, and then also after three travels, perform a refinement. And this relaxation interval just means um, don't perform any refinements or consider goals completely converged as a stopping criteria, anything like that, um, until an extra 0.2 travels has gone by. Now, to go with this, I want to make sure I solve all the way through to four travels. So I've just unchecked my goals convergence here as a stopping criteria. And then that means that we'll only stop once all the refinements are performed and once we hit four travels, which is the default automatic stopping criteria. So we'll manually assess goals convergence for this problem. Okay. And when we go ahead and run this, we'll run it all from scratch. You'll see that initially we get our starting mesh and I have this goal plot here kind of scaled down so we can see a little more clearly. I just right clicked so we can show travels and uh, manually scaled the forces so we can be on the screen here. So we just got past two travels and the first refinement was performed. You can see the number of mesh cells over here increased. Once we get to three travels, the next refinement is going to be performed. So here we go. It should bring us up somewhere close to our target. I forget if it was 250,000 cells, we got to 220,000. Okay, now it's going to continue to solve until that manual criteria I stopped of four travels. So we want to make sure we solve long enough initially to get the flow field mostly developed before we perform that initial refinement, uh, which you can do either with these travels limits or by using the goals convergence refinement criteria. And what's so nice about this is we get kind of a built-in history of the mesh convergence or mesh independence of the solution. So if we continue performing these refinements and we see eventually that there's a very small difference from one refinement to the next, then we could conclude that we have a mesh independent solution. In this case, it looks like we still have a, you know, somewhat sizable difference from uh, the previous refinement to the next of a few percent. So depending on the level of accuracy that you're looking for, you would probably want to continue refining this. Okay, but we're already quite a bit higher than we were with our 66 to 67 kilonewtons that was predicted with the initial study with no mesh refinement. Now we're up at 70 kilonewtons. And the nice thing about this approach is even if you change the wind direction, the mesh refinement you know, is going to adapt to that. Um, so for situations, especially where you, it's difficult to predict where the refinement needs to occur, this is going to give you a great result. When I talked about manually assessing the solution convergence, one of the ways to do that is to edit, create a goal plot I've set here to show travels. And then I will go to its history. And again, the defaults are quite um, large because initially when this problem starts up, there's this really big spike in force. And that can also throw off your automatic convergence criteria for your goals. So I'll show on the screen here where you can edit 
the convergence criteria on your goals when you have big swings in the goal value um, you may want to enter in manually a criteria or do what I did here and just manually determine the convergence so I'm going to rescale this down to some number that's kind of within the range of where we want to be operating and we can see that startup behavior and then so we went from 72.5 kilonewtons roughly on the previous refinement to right around 70. So that's still a large enough difference that you may want to consider continuing to refine the mesh. And we could always make changes in the calculation control options like adding, uh, extending this travels limit here, adding more rows to our table of refinement and increasing the number of maximum cells. And if we did that, then we could actually run and just continue the calculation to kind of pick up where we left off. Oh, one more note is that when you are performing these solution adaptive refinements, depending on your options for saving, you'll see this option here, save before every refinement. So what this will do is that I can go in and load from file a older version of the results before that refinement was performed. So we can see here the uh, first refinement. And then if we go back even farther, we can see the initial mesh and the associated plots for velocity and so on that were available at those times. So if you want to have access to these backups, just make sure that option is enabled. Otherwise, if you want to save the hard drive space, you could delete these or uh, disable that option. The last thing I want to mention is that you can combine local mesh controls with the solution adaptive refinement. So what I've done here is brought back that volume uh, mesh control, which is performing some refinement. But what's more interesting about this is in your refinement tab of your calculation control options, you'll be able to separately control the refinement within the global domain versus the refinement within that local mesh zone. However many of those you have will show up here. So just to show you what happens here, if we load these results, you can sort of see that uh, the refinement is limited or, or cropped or clipped where with anywhere within the global domain that's not that local mesh control, it's only allowed to use level one. And anywhere within that local mesh region, it's allowed to use the higher refinements. Now, I would caution against using too big of a disparity between the global and local zone because it's never good to have a very sudden sharp transition in the mesh cells here. So I would try to keep them within one or two refinement levels of each other if possible. But this is a good way to keep the software from over refining areas you're not interested in. So hopefully you found this video helpful and it gave you some ideas on how to use the solution adaptive refinement. Let us know in the comments below what type of content you'd like to see next.